welcome to part two with the head coach. I don't know how we. This is the first two-part series in Bison <laughs> Media Blog history, and the first guest. Hopefully, the first of many. So, thanks you know for what? Doing this is this. quite an honor for me to be here. <laughs> yeah. Well, we have you here obviously because it's the start of spring football mm -hmm. on Saturday. There's a ton of questions, and obviously, probably now the spotlight even more so on your team. Would you say this year than after the? Three and eight season when there were so many questions like what's going on with the Bison, you'd have to say now that the spotlight's probably even greater now. Well, that's a you know that's a debatable topic. I know it's a new year, and I, I I certainly recognize there's a great deal of interest. We've got a new team, we've got an exciting team, but there are a lot of questions that we have to answer. You know, some people say you know what the cupboard's all full. As, as a football coach, you're looking at always questions that are out there. What new guys are going to step into some new roles? There is a couple cupboards uh, missing, or a couple cups missing from the cupboard. I start with maybe linebackers. Yep. Uh, you're missing good DN. In your mind, what's the number one? Uh, well, you know, there? Jeff, we're really concerned about the linebacker position. I think anytime you lose two seniors, uh, Preston Evans and Chad Wilson, who were such solid players for so many years, uh, particularly this last year, that always. You know, that's a difficult position to play. It's right. one where you've got to be physically talented, but moreover, physically talented, you've got to be mentally sharp. And what two guys are going to step into that role? We certainly have got some players who have played a lot, uh, but not at those specific positions. I think the other cub cover that might be slightly bare is wide receiver. Mm -hmm. Warren Holloway was such a huge weapon for you. Yeah. You don't know what you have at least in my opinion, with Zach Rod and Trevor Gebhardt yet. You know what you got in Ryan Smith, but going forward, I know that was addressed in recruiting because you picked up three guys there. You know, it certainly was, but I, you know, I, all the indications that we thought, saw from Zach uh, during fall camp and spring ball, I mean, he was right on, on uh, a part of play really, really well. Uh, so I'm a little bit more confident. Now, now, that's not to detract from Warren's contribution last year. I thought Warren had a big, big year. Yeah. But uh, Zach showed us an awful lot in a lot of competitive situations. We feel a little bit more comfortable there. You think he'll be, uh, I mean, with a collarbone, is this about as good as he can be now with a steel plate in, <laughs> well, in We've him? told him to drink a lot of milk along the ways, too, <laughs> Dom. Uh, you know, I think he's going to come out and be fine. Uh, it was a freak deal. Yeah. Uh, but uh, you know what? There's a silver lining in everything, and uh, we'll ex be excited about working with him. Lingering injuries. I know Brock Jensen had that mm -hmm. toe thing that uh, was going on forever, and apparently it's still going on. What's his status heading into spring? Well, you know what? He's, he's got a little bit of a pain in there still. Um, you know, we backed him off during the course of winter workouts, Jeff. Uh, he'll start out during spring football, and uh, will he be at completely 100%? I don't think it's going to make a difference whether we practice him or not. A turf toe uh, is something that just takes a long, long time to get through. He's going to be awfully close to full speed, though. This is beyond – no surgery, you said, though, back in the in, – during the season can help this. This is just no. a resting that can be – It's a resting, and, and he's made progress, uh, you know, both he and I and everybody else and Bobby, we all want him to be back at 100%. Mm -hmm. I think he'll be close. And you got new turf coming in. Talk yeah, about we do. that coming in. You know, Gate City Field, we're yeah. excited about that. Uh, you know, that's the same surface as what's in the, uh, uh, I believe, the, the, the dome Louis. down in St. Yeah. Louis. Great surface, and I think that's going to have a big, big impact. We won't have it this spring, but we'll have it in the fall. It's going to help the turf toe, is right? I mean, you can I, play without <laughs> Heckendorf. I mean, there's a on rock, and on, on and turf. on. Yeah. It's going to help uh, a lot of this. It even helped the coaches back. It just, <laughs> that that Astro turf was brutal. I think the other biggest question, uh, Coach, we've been hearing on the blog is, what are you going to do with backup quarterback? Because obviously you have Esley Thornton uh -huh. there who redshirted. Carson Wentz is a behemoth mm -hmm. that's six five and two twenty, who won plenty of awards at quarterback. You haven't. Uh, at least an issue in our mind or a, a need maybe at safety. Have you talked mm -hmm. at all at Esley about possibly moving spots? Well, Esley's a very talented player, but, you know, I think what we learned through the years is that you better be good at quarterback, and we're going to go into this spring with a competitive situation. Now, the fact that Brock won so many games at quarterback, uh, to say that position is completely wide open, that wouldn't be accurate. I mean, you, you cannot bank how much equity was done. You mm -hmm. just That's game time experience. However, I think it's important for us to – competition's always good. Good. We feel like we've got four really good quarterbacks. Uh, they're all going to see a lot of work this spring. And uh, you know what? You need to stage who's your first team, who's your second team, third and fourth. And so we've got a competitive situation Co there. Compare your death coach from this spring at quarterback to maybe four years ago. Oh. It's nine day different, yeah. Jeff. I mean, we went through and just at one time we had one quarterback. Yeah. And you know what? We... I was an heir as a, as a head football coach not to recruit at that position. That, that position is so taxing. When you're good at quarterback, you got a chance to be really good as a football team, and when you're not, you're going to suffer for it. And so we think we're always going to be well-stocked, and we're going to keep recruiting quarterbacks. You mentioned 
few times to us last year how hungry the guys were starting mm -hmm. spring football, how the season ended at Eastern Washington. Do you, can you get that same kind of hunger after you experience what you just did in January? That's difficult to replicate. I mean, we have a different uh, composition of our football team this year, Adam. Um, certainly, there's guys who are hunger, hungry and they want to they wanna win it all. Uh, wanting to win it all and doing it are two different things. And uh, you know what? I think we're going to find out, uh, you know, as you get into the 13th and 14th practice of spring football, what guys are still going out there getting better, what guys want to say, hey, let's just punch the clock. And last year we had so many guys on the right side of the fence. Um, you know, I'll know as the spring goes along. Mm -hmm. You have a new defensive uh, linebackers coach mm -hmm. in Steve Stenard. What's the uh, – uh, how does he fit right in? Uh, I'm taking that you've known him for a while and, and his philosophies match up to yeah, the Tampa Yeah, you know, I, I really have known him a long time, Jeff. Uh, Steve Stenard was a, you know, really solid player at the University of Nebraska and, and – you know, we've kind of followed each other through our whole course in, in the coaching profession. Um, you know, we've hung our hat on the Tampa 2 system for a lot of years. Right. And so we felt like it was really important for our players uh, to come in and get a, a guy who had a really good understanding of the linebacker position, uh, all the different run fits, uh, the nomenclature, uh, the terminology and all that. I think it's probably as seamless a transition as what I could have anticipated. Uh, we're excited about having Steve part of our Bison family. You know, two years ago in the 09 flood, you're coming off a 3-8 and eight season and, and <laughs> all heck's breaking loose. Shoveling the, I remember shoveling the grass <laughs> fields to get out there. I mean, you stop practicing. You're practicing started, in yeah. a golf bubble. Yeah. Uh, uh, how, how long? <laughs> no. To talk about the two years. Adversity difference. will make you, if it doesn't kill you, it'll make you stronger. <laughs> I have to deal with him every week. So yeah, I, yeah. Know, I know. I feel your yeah. pain. You'll always re remind me of what I asked you the first question last year. If you don't win the national championship, oh. do you think the season <laughs> is a it. failure? So yeah. let me ask you, in, in, uh, in your opinion, do you believe you overachieved last season? You know what, uh, I think last year was a remarkable year from a standpoint of the stars all aligned. We felt like going in, Dom, we would have, a, have enough talent uh, for us to, to, to make a playoff run. How deep you go, you know what, things have to come out mm -hmm. right. Uh, you know, I think we've got enough talent, again, to be a potential uh, playoff team. Uh, so much of that's going to come into play with injury and the ball bouncing right. But uh, the makings are there to be a really solid football team. You know, I'm not going to uh, downplay the ability level that we have. We've got good players. Uh, do we have enough good players uh, to, to make the run that we did last year? You know what, I think we got the potential. Now it's going to be we've got to produce. What's your gut feeling, Coach, on the redshirt freshman class? And are there a couple mm -hmm. kids there we need to look out for? Well, I think it's a solid group. Uh, you know, without question, guys uh, came in and they competed. Uh, but uh, to say that, that that group was as deep as the other groups that we've had, particularly the one group, probably not. Uh, we'll find out a whole lot more this spring. Biggest thing you want to see come April 21 on the greeting goal game, what do you want to see out of this team heading into the offseason workouts? I uh, want to see uh, athleticism out there on the football field. I think we, we really got to see which guys are the guys that are, are really good athletes. And I think that depth is going to be important. That component as we made the playoff run. The depth is the thing that pushed us over the edge, and so we've got to develop that depth. So when you look out there in the game and you see all kinds of new young guys out there making plays out in space, uh, playing at a very high level, then you're going to say, hey, coach is going to be happy. Besides, uh, we asked the covered bear, I guess the opposite question, besides quarterback, where is the covered full in your mm -hmm. mind? Where do you really like? Well, I think our defensive front. I think, uh, you know, the defensive line, and that, that has such a, uh, an impact in the football game. Uh, certainly, Coulter Boyer leaving, that's a big, big, uh, big shoes to fill, mm -hmm. both athletically and, and with leadership. But, you know, I think we've got some good ends out there. Uh, you know, Kyle Emanuel uh, finished off well. Cole Jurek had a, had a great year. Ricky Hagan. All those three guys have played an awful lot. And then inside, you've got Levon Perry and Ryan Drevlo and Justin Junkum. I think there's a couple of young guys that are kind of – that front defensive four, I think, can really be good. And if you can get control of that offensive line, you got a lot of good things that are going to happen. Yeah, they're so good. Team. I could coach them. That's how good they <laughs> are. Let's not make overstatements, Jeff. You keep on talking about your golf game. I'll tell you what, pretty soon I'm going to break into my Lou Holtz and start critiquing, critiquing you. Hey, it's Pro Day on Wednesday, which yep. is, I know is something you always like to, and it's something that's blown up basically in the last five years thanks to guys like Joe Mays and mm -hmm. Craig Dahl, uh, Ramon Umber, Nick Schomer. You got. <laughs> 
Paul Kornick, who was at the Combine, yeah. Matt Bellman, DJ McNorton. Who in your mind really should the, the scouts be looking well, at? Well, those guys in, in particular, you know, it's always sometimes you have some questions. You go, wow, I didn't think this guy was ready. I just know this, Dom, the response that we've had as far as pro scouts coming at NDSU mm -hmm. each year has grown, and we have a cupboard full of guys that are coming in this year. Uh, that's good for Bison football. Mm -hmm. It's good to get these guys some exposure. We're going to have as many pro scouts here as what we've had in a long, long wow. time. Well, there you go. The head coach in the house. I'm ready for. I'm ready for football now. It's a highlight, man. Let's. Uh, oh, you're let's ready for football. Off. I am. Guys, pleasure and honor to be here. <laughs> Craig Bull, the head coach of the Bison, joining us here on the latest edition of the Bison Video Blog, along with Jeff Colfax. I'm Don Mizzo. Thanks to Coach Bull.